Ah, the natural environment. There's a lot going on here. There's plants, animals, soil, climate, eco-regions. A lot of these things are obvious. Like the monoculture that exists here. Why, why do so many sage plants grow here? But some things are behind the scenes. To understand all of those things, we need an understanding of the essentials of the environment. and welcome. Today we're going to talk about blizzards. What is a blizzard and why are they so, they're so nasty. Well, they wouldn't be nasty if it weren't for the cold and the, and the wind and the snow, but it's actually all related to geography because I'm standing here at, at one of the Finger Lakes in New York and these lakes are beautiful. Imagine the shore on the on the far side there through the fog, but this particular blizzard uh, is fairly common to this region, upper New York State, North America. Why is that? Well, it, it has to do with geography. It has to do with the lake effect. The lake effect is not resulting from this lake. The lake effect is the idea that the winds, uh, the air masses, pick up moisture from the Great Lakes. This is a nice lake, but it's not one of the Great Lakes. One of the Great Lakes is just to the north of me called Lake Ontario. It's one of the five Great Lakes. Even larger is a lake uh, to the west of that called Lake Huron. And even larger than that is another lake to the west of that called Lake Superior. So uh, that, plus a little bit of Lake Michigan and Lake Erie, these air masses, as they move over the lakes, they pick up, they pick up moisture. And the moisture then gets placed uh, in, these, in these air masses and then it falls later on as snow, as you can see here. It's quite lovely, really, but it all has to do with geography. Get out there and explore the world! You know, it's, it's not enough to just study the landscape. You gotta get out there on the landscape. You gotta get immersed. In the landscape! Hello! Awesome. What does it sound like? What kind of vegetation is on the landscape? What kind of plants can grow on this landscape? In this particular one, it's pretty rocky. There's some lava flows and other things. And only certain kinds of things like sage and this Mormon tea can grow here. You know, the old pioneers, they made tea from this stuff. So, what kind of climate is here? What kind of everyday weather patterns uh, allow this to thrive? What kind of soil is uh, out here on this landscape? I'm standing here in January. I'm wearing just a, a, a long sleeve shirt with a, a, a t-shirt underneath it and um, uh, pants of course, <laughs> but uh, shoes. But uh, why am I not wearing a winter coat and gloves? I've got those. I'm prepared. But uh, I don't have those. Well, so what does that say about the, uh, the climate and the weather patterns here? What would it look like here in the summertime? What, how much water would I need for, uh, to get out of there on the landscape? What kind of equipment might I need to be able to map this? For example, a GPS receiver and a camera. So it's important to get out there on the landscape. And not just to study the landscape. Because geography is more than, than studying or getting out there in the landscape. It's also, it's also enjoying the landscape, enjoying our earth. And by enjoying the earth and really appreciating it, what does it sound like, what does it smell like, what does it uh, uh, feel like, both you know, in, the, in the mind and on the body, what, uh, what, is it, uh, uh, what kind of things am I, am I sensing here? Um, by doing that, we can develop an appreciation for our earth. 
not just local, but global, and every scale in between. And it's only, I think, by doing that, by fully appreciating the Earth, will we want to protect the Earth, will we want to protect the planet uh, for ourselves and future generations. And we do that by fostering a love of geography and uh, environmental studies. But I think a, an important part of that is actually getting out there on the landscape and enjoying it. Okay, now guess where I am. I'm in a totally different uh, eco-region. I'm in... Well, you tell me. I've got... What do we have here? A woodland. What season of the year is it? Notice there are some pines. There's also a lot of uh, deciduous trees that have no leaves. All the leaves are down here. No snow right here. Got a nice log I can sit on and chat about geography. Okay, so I'm in the Georgia uh, forests, north central Georgia. And as you can see here, it's, it's quite pleasant. I've got a coat on, but uh, it's really quite warm. No hat, no gloves. And unlike the desert where I was in before, this is a completely different ecoregion. It's got different uh, uh, processes going on, different decaying uh, rates. It's got different vegetation, different animals live around here, different plants, certainly. The water is uh, different chemistry than the water that uh, uh, is in different ecoregions than this one. And uh, there are various forces of uh, development and change on the landscape here, both physical and human caused. So one of the big uh, forces on the landscape here, human caused, is uh, forestry. So these forests are definitely not old growth forests. They've been planted and replanted over the years. Also, this area has seen a lot of history, north central Georgia, throughout uh, the past centuries. So. Get out there and explore the world. So that's all about geography education. It's getting out there on the landscape, seeing different things, observing uh, different sights and smells and sounds around us. Boy, that is steep. That is a steep hill. Why is that so steep? Well, because we're in San Francisco, and San Francisco is built on a series of steep hills. Why is it so steep here? Well, it has to do with physical geography. The physical geography of this area is uh, right at the edge of the Pacific Plate and the edge of the North American Plate. So there's been a lot of tectonic movement over the past and at present. Why do I say at present? Well, because this area is prone to earthquakes sitting right on, as it does, the San Andreas Fault. Also what's fascinating about this area is that it has a lot of cultural diversity. And uh, San Francisco is a, is a city of a lot of different kinds of folks. And that's what's fascinating too. You can study all this uh, in the realm of cultural geography. Now, what we do here in, in the field, I'm in an urban area now, right? As opposed to where I was in the past with the other videos you've seen. Well, even in an urban area, we can study all kinds of things. We can study, for example, the, the architecture, when these structures were built, by whom and why, what influences they had. We can study different neighborhood types. We can study traffic patterns, crime patterns, patterns of uh, businesses. Uh, we can study library locations, uh, university locations, and how those impact uh, the surrounding uh, demographics of the neighborhood. So there's lots of neat things we can study in an urban area. Get out there and explore the world. I'm standing in front of, you guessed it, an example of geography. As you can see, this boat contains a large number of containers, and each one of those is full of bananas. So, this company, Dole, is a large food grower 
end distributor, one of the largest companies in the world. And in this case, it's an example of geography because these bananas had to be shipped from somewhere. Take a look at that flag. That flag up there is from a Central American country. Can you guess which one it is? Why is that? Well, because these, these bananas are not grown here in... This is, this is Southern California. These bananas were shipped here from Central America. Where are these bananas going? Well, it has to do with markets, which has to do with geography. This bay is here because of physical geography. And it's deep enough where it can get a ship this size into the harbor. So it has to do with local geography as well as global geography. Trade, commodities, markets, climate that can produce bananas. Pros and cons of shipping food large distances, the energy required, the monoculture required to grow bananas in Costa Rica, Panama, etc. That all has to do with geography. And so this ship and the transportation of these bananas is a perfect point to discuss some core topics of geography. Scale, imports, exports, climate, vegetation, energy, demand and supply. And so these bananas also uh, can point to some good math lessons, some math curricula. Because if you look at these containers, how many bananas do you think are actually on that ship? Thousands? Millions? Where are these bananas stored? How are they stored? Are they refrigerated? Are they cushioned in any way? They're taken over to this warehouse here, loaded onto these trucks. These trucks then go to distribution facilities, which eventually get to grocery stores, which eventually get to consumers, who eventually take them home and store them in their kitchens and consume them. So, this all has to do with geography.